This film is a collaboration between TA Fishing and TA Outdoors. A father and son fun-filled combo that's guaranteed to hopefully catch a few fish. But we've got a secret weapon in this one, not just our usual merch. You can put this on and guaranteed nobody's going to be fishing in your swim. You just check out the inside of the car. Obviously, I'm holding the camera. But this car fishing, there's so much gear. There's two of us going for, I should think it's barely 18 hours. It's absolutely madness. I'm just waiting for Mike. He's actually gone home. Wait for this, he's, he's, gone, to get, he's gone to get more stuff. Plus, we're waiting for a delivery. Guy said he sent us a bit of bait to try. Right, we've got the bait here, or one bag of it, two bags I bought, that's all I bought. Um, Mike's just rigging up over here, He's doing his bit for TA Outdoors. And um, we decided just to fish the same swim, it looks like a double swim, the balls are doubled up, so we assume it's a double swim, we're going to squeeze in her anyway. Um, doesn't seem to be much caught, cool. they've got a match over on the main bag where we would have gone. It doesn't seem a lot caught there, and they're the guys pole fishing, so generally they catch plenty of fish. Um, another gentleman on this bank has been carp fishing all day, I think he's been here, and nothing. However, we're going to be fishing into the dark, so that hopefully we swing it in our favour. We've got the luxury of all the geese around us, which are going to be cracking off all night. And uh, I'm just about to bombard just close in here. I'm going to have to do a back cast, because up here, I've got all trees up here. So it's probably a lot of people would fish here and fish over to the island, the point of the island, I don't know. I've not fished this swim before. So I don't know, I don't know where they cast, we're just throwing it out into the lake. But aside from the boys, I'm going to put some ground bait out there and um, we'll change it around this time before I piled in a low ground bait and then put my boilie in the middle of it. So because of these overhanging trees, I've got a sort of backhand cast here. Now it's tempting if there's two of you in a double swim just to fish absolutely straight out. Might go by the island, I'll probably go out here and I'm going to throw one down inside here, probably a little bit closer and try it and um, follow up with these bad boys which are just regular ground bait. It's Bailey's horse feet. It's Bailey's horse. It's Bailey's horse feed and brand. I've just got the uh no this is mine is a whole new one. Well, we're finally set up, and just listen. Can you hear that? It stopped. So peaceful here at Burial Fishers where the geese eventually pack it in. So I've got a rod around the corner here. <clears throat> There's a guy fishing up there, so I can't exactly pound a load of bait in yet. I've had to back cast about 40 yards out to the right because there's this overhanging tree there and uh, Mike's just over by the island with an absolutely stunning first cast. So we put the bait in after the first cast, luckily, and we're just gonna leave it there because he definitely <laughs> won't get another one like that in the dark. And he's fishing just across in line with those people out there. So pretty well he's in the same area. We've put a load of these loose boilies out and um, we were just discussing whether in fact it might be better to fish a long link, you know, from the lead 
than the weight to the hook or a short one. Now I've got some new ones I've been trying, but they, they seem very short to me. So if you're in silty conditions, I wonder would the lead pull it down? And in that case, should I be fishing with either one what they call a wafter, which just swirls around, I guess, how it paddles itself, I don't know. Maybe there's a battery in it. And, or a pop-up, which is obviously self-explanatory, it pops up. I don't know, I really don't know what to, to do, but if, if Mike, who's got a short and a long link on, if he gets a take this on the long link, I will change all these over to the long link. At the moment, nothing coming out. I'll tell you what I will show you for beginners, it's on a packet, which is quite interesting. So, you go out, you buy your boilies like this in the bag, but on the back of this one, it shows you here one, two, three different sort of hook setups. In fact, let me get the camera show you in close ups. For beginners, it might help them. So, just to give you a guide, on the back of this packet, it's got there look, hair stop, a pop up, which is a form of boilie that floats. You can see that there. And it's got a split shot for balancing it and how the rig goes and how the actual hair comes off the top of the shank of the hook. Down here's another one. That's called, by the way, a KD rig. I've got no idea who KD is, but he invented it, I guess. This one is called a combi rig. It's got like tungsten putty, which weights it down. Again, with a pop-up. So not ordinarily, that pop-up would lift the hook right off the bottom. But this way, you can pin it down. And I think this is where they get that thing, that term critically balanced. It depends how much tungsten putty you put on there, where you put it to weight it up or down, pop-up. Finally, it's got here a fluorocarbon rig, which means absolutely nothing to me, but it's another rig that you can fish up. So you can see the basic principle of it is that there's the hook, there's the hair up there, there's the boilie, there's the stop. Same thing, look. The trace, the putty, the hook, the boilie on that hair, which is put on with a needle. And, you know, it's just a method which is highly, highly successful and fished in conjunction with a bite alarm there. Basically, you can go to sleep, the fish hooks itself, you pick the rod up, and away you go. And you put the boilie on with what's called a baiting needle here, or hair rig needle. This one is about 40 odd years, at least, by about 45 years old, this one. And that uh, was made by Partridge of Redditch. The only downside is it's black, so if you do like I've just done and dropped it, you've got to find it. Now standard hooks before, the partridge at Redditch used to do, this is years ago. Again, it's a 45 year old packet here. Mike happened to have it. See, these ones are called Partridge Record Breaker Specialist Hooks. I guess that's the hook code, size, look at the quantity in a pack, guys. This is why I like to go fishing as a kid years ago. 25 hooks in a packet. And it tells you on the back a little bit about, it still applies nowadays. It says on the back of this one, the record breaker with his black finish was formerly known as a specialist bronze finish. And this is what it says. The name was changed as a result of other hookmakers copying the specialist name. So there's nothing new there, but it's copied, isn't it? This range of hook has a strong, has a forged offset reddish bend, which makes it very strong. Many anglers feel the offset bend aids hooking. Now, just going on to sea fishermen, Tony, who runs Tony's Tackle down in Eastbourne, always, always offsets his beach hooks, just so that he thinks that it's a much better hooking, so the same must apply here. And it says the proportion of shank length to gape gives very good holding. And this one is primarily designed for specimen angling, also used for salmon and trout. And the specification is black finish, heavyweight wire. And this is about 1x short stroke, falls offset, reddish bend, slightly wide gape, small straight eye, medium short point, small barb. I've got to be honest, I've still got packets of these that were given to me by Alan Bramley when they were testing them and I'm still using them and I like a white gate hook. I've always said I like a wide gate hook in a thickish wire and that's, there you go, it stood me in good stead. That's just something interesting from an old vintage packet. Don't imagine you'll be able to buy them now, you never know, they might be able to. And of course that name, British Hooks.
and of course at Berry Fisheries on the main lake you've got plenty plenty of fishing platforms there to choose from and they've even got you can see that green mesh at the back there's areas that I believe they're trying to um, uh, grow some lilies in and you can see the good wood platforms and you can put you know small amounts of gear on them or you can have large amounts of gear on a larger platform and of course I reckon a lot of their fish so big fat carp would be underneath that rhododendron overhang but no point casting too close because at night you might not know how far you're casting guys there's loads of tench down here spawning there I don't know if you're going to see them right in amongst the rushes there they're not carp they're tench there yeah, you can see that's the back of a tent chair. Another one in the front, just up here. You might be able to see the rushes banging and moving around there. Look. Just here, man, the fish is right in front of me. You can actually see the stems knocking, and they, even over here. Look at that lot. There's loads of tension. Well, those geese do actually have some advantage other than eating everything it's because you can get feathers off them like this well not off them I haven't plucked them obviously I picked this one off the ground and you can peel this right back we've actually got a film up making floats to be honest if you peel all this off like this I'm going to say as a guesstimate a span six inches so I say about five inches you can cut that there I probably won't get it with my fingers you can paint the top about here varnish the rest or you could you could even paint that with black you put a wiring at the bottom a rubber on the top and there you are hey ho you've got your own float and that probably take that size about one or two BB not a lot if you want to make a, a heavier float then you would make a sanded cork body to go on the outside of this and drill it and slide this through and then, the cork, then you can put bigger weights if you go and river fishing or something like that for chub. So if you see some feathers around you like messing around making your own floats give it a go or check out our films that are online. Now who can recognise this one people? A buzzard? No. A red kite? No. Wait for this. It's a really rare osprey. I don't even think I've filmed one in the UK before. What a crackerjack predator. And you can actually see in a minute, here comes the, uh, the crow to mob and chase off that bird because he knows that's a potential predator.
It's nice to see you're covering up the blue, Dad. <laughs> it's got a Dad's pillow. Got, Has it got a bit of a pillow? Yeah, blowing pillow and undo the valve and it blows yourself up. Yeah. Oh, the old self-inflating. Self-inflating. So, Dad... Hear it. Oh, yeah. I can hear it. I can hear it. To everyone wondering, Dad has opted for the umbrella setup today yeah. for the overnight. So I've got the bivvy and Dad's got the brolly. I've definitely <laughs> got a sleeping bag for it when you see this one. <laughs> 72 years old, <laughs> owned by my granddad. I think he's still in it. <laughs> <laughs> come on, granddad. <laughs> Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Clonk. <laughs> the thing is, at 69, when that rug goes off, <laughs> with my joints, it's like sort of slow motion getting out of bed, because there's nothing moving. The brain's saying, get the fish, get the fish, get the fish quickly. And your body's going, <laughs> uh, That's fine, because it keeps the damp coming off my head here, guys. Yeah, you've got the whip breeze here, the block. And that breeze block, the <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> Breeze block is a piece of building material, weighs about <laughs> 10 pounds. I haven't got a breeze block on my head, but it does stop that cold airflow coming through. And I know it's going to get a bit chilly tonight. Yeah. But you know, we just need one fish, don't we? we just That's need it. One. Just one fish will be fun. It's the more... second best thing is we're going to have a cook up in Exactly, minute. yeah. We, it's what we're looking forward to. He doesn't know, but I bought extra tea bags. Oh, good, good. Yeah, man. I thought be excited. <laughs> I bought two beers. Oh, awesome. Well, you're pretty close to your rods there. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, not too far over here. We've got lots of gear, that's why we have the Barrow in England. Well, in the UK, Britain, mainland Europe as well. Carp fishing scene is mostly a Barrow. It's, it's a, a waiting cave. game, it is a waiting game, you know. Yeah, I think it's near cooking time, isn't it? I feel so, everyone tummy else, time. Everyone else is packing up on the lake now, so we should have it to ourselves. Absolutely, and we've just seen an osprey. Oh yeah, Yeah, do. absolutely. Because yeah, there be. used to be seagulls in here a lot that used to be taking the boilies, your bait, as fast as you were catapulting it in. Mm. And we said, well, where are the seagulls gone? Well, the osprey's been chasing them off, I'm guessing, I don't know. Well, we're doing a bait up again, guys. It looks like the last one before it gets dark. It doesn't look dark with this camera because it's a low light camera, but we've just seen one or two fish moving around a little bit, but not very much, not very much. So we figured, look, getting towards nine o'clock, let's give it uh, fresh baits, fresh bags, you know, with the uh, hook samples in. And um, just throw it out, then I think I'm going to actually fill it in and pound it with ground bait. <laughs> It'll put the level up if nothing else. <laughs> Let's get it out there. I'm going to put one right around the side here. Um, the gentleman's gone over there now, he's bream fishing, so I figure maybe some carp will come in to mop up where he's been bream fishing. That's my hunch. Also, the third rod is over on the side, out the way. In my age, I've got an old boy's third rod license, which other younger people can have as well. And to be honest, you think. I've got three rods, it's much better. I'm really caught much more having the three rod licence in the UK, that is. But, you know, it's still a bonus. Now for the other two rods, I'm going to go backhand. I've got to do a backhand cast to try and get them around to the right underneath this overhanging tree. Because when it gets pitch dark tonight, there's no way I can afford to do an overhead cast. It's going to go up the tree. You can see all the rubbish that's been cast up there before, so I figured the only way is to get an overhand cast. Let's try and sight up over there. If you can look, I'm going to put my finger there. Can you see just there? There's a V gap in the skyline, I've got to probably aim for that and that gives me something to see the silhouette when it's dark. Well, people are packing up and we haven't seen anything cool at all. One bream I think. They're all set up now. It has at last stilled off perfectly. We've seen I think one carp move over here. As you can see. Lovely and still at the moment. All rods motionless, but we're going to have a cook up. We're not going to be defeated. And look at the quality of the chairs. <laughs> Luxury green version and the animal chair. Well, let's get fired up, shall we? Yeah. Well, we've got it on the go, people. 
steak and chips. It's going to be surf and turf because I've also got some prawns. All fresh, all kept in the chiller. We're figuring, being expert cooks, <laughs> they might take a while to cook. Yeah. These will take a what? Eight, Cut, ten minutes? Uh, six minutes, probably three each, minutes each side. Each side, yeah. They're quite thick. They're thick steaks, and you do it and then put these in at the last minute, I figure. What do we know? That needs to be hot to cook them up yeah, properly, yeah. Hot. And sh shake, wrap them, roll with those. We've had a couple of little dimples on the surface out there, but at the moment, very, very still, so we figure we might as well do the cook up now. Because the fish might get good, hopefully. I think it'll be half past nine before it, uh, it does actually sort of kick off, we hope. Well, people will get a bit of father and son, not bonding time, we're getting a bit of father and son burning time here. <laughs> Burn time. <laughs> burning time, <laughs> yeah. I think the chips are looking pretty fair. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting there. They're getting they there. They need a bit longer, I'd say. Yeah, both sides. We've only turned them the once, so being, you know, thick steak, were they rump steak, I think they were? Rumps, yeah, rump they're, steak. They're going to take a bit of cooking. And what do you guys like? Do you like... Rare, medium rare, well done, or cut the horns off, wipe it and cut the tail off and put it on the plate. How do you like yours? How rare? There is actually more taste to a rare, a, a rare steak, yeah, isn't there? I'm a medium yeah. rare person, yeah. but um, sometimes with roast beef, rare, it's quite nice. Yep. Yeah. You've got the gravy and everything that goes with it. So these prawns are going to yeah. take long, so I pop turn them in now? Turn it up a bit now, you need it. I have, I turned it up, yeah. You turn it back up? Turn it back yeah. up a bit more? You, you turn it up again, yeah, you want it to cook, otherwise I don't know the cook time as much. Get it going. Because that, that, that'll sit, that meat, for a while. We're going to rest the meat. You turn it up, yeah. Yeah, it's away it now. Though. I know it sounds bad to say this is a fish mother, but please, no runs just yet. Yeah. No bites. Yeah. Now these prawns, what do you think? I don't know how long you do, probably a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah not so long, so on. I'd say they'll be ready to rock and roll. They'll take the chill up, chill, chill it down a little bit. Look at this, surf and turf. You've got to love it. Just tip the oil back towards you. Drain it in there. You know what I mean, Drop. just get them covered in oil. Fat. That's it, let them sizzle. Is this going to be a healthy meal, what do you think? Would you call um, it classified as healthy? It's, it's at that point where you don't really care, isn't it? You just think, <laughs> I'm just going to eat it. Well, look at those, those chips. But you can't go wrong with it, that's the thing. It's like a staple English meal. It's, well, yeah. around the world, but... Surf and turf, yeah. Surf and turf and just... You, if, you, if you're in a restaurant chips. with rump steak, prawns and French fries <laughs> and a beer I've got, which is a safe, yeah. safer dessert. Nah, let's get decent. Look at the setting, guys. Look at my bedding over here, look. Old school bedding for you fishermen out there who are over, say, 60, probably have done this years ago. Got a camp bed, sleeping bag, an old car, whatever, dog blanket, I think. Pillow. Mike thinks I stole it from an airline. That's a terrible thing to say. I only had the toilet rolls. <laughs> Mike's got the luxury version. <clears throat> Whack that up, that heat. Bit more heat? Yeah, we need to evaporate this. They had a lot of moisture, the prawns. So they've added loads of moisture to it. Well, we, I've had some of those cold, so I know they're okay. Yeah, yeah, it's more like warming them up, really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. That's what we're doing. Yeah, the gentleman there is just packing up. I believe, and I'm absolutely serious, I think we might have <coughs> the lake. whole of Berry Hill Fisheries main lake, the old 200-year-old lake. I think we might have it to ourselves. Is that <laughs> because nothing's biting? <laughs> yeah, if someone knows something, they, we don't. They, do they know something we don't? But what a setting. It's always worth coming here just for a bit of fun fishing and if we if we get something it'd be i reckon 9 30 10 just as the light's going and there guys just go through the background i think that was the osprey that's a clean one and we just cut do the you sides. want to cut one i just cut the sides a bit cut the sides well, yeah, listen, to, it. listen to all, all this bushcraft talk you want to just burn it but this is such a thick steak it is thick, yeah. It's not like a sirloin, is no. it? Let's turn that off. I'd let those cook in their own fat, because they can be absolutely tongue scaldingly yeah, hot. Yeah. I like the look at those prawns. 
ruin it with this microphone on this camera. It has a very satisfying sizzle to it. People will think I fish on my own. This is the first. This is the first company I've had for uh, six years. Because uh, normally the only friend I've got is. Hello. Uh, what's your name? Uh, and my name's Graham. What's your name? My name's Mike. <laughs> Get it, Mike? Microphone. Come on, come on, children. It's early yet. Yeah? That's probably about as good as it will get, and we can just refry the steaks if not. So I take them off now. I'll tell you what I like, refried beans in Mexico, in oh, Cabo, yeah. we've had refried beans, I quite like that at breakfast. The best steak I've ever had, I don't know if you'd agree, we were with, over on the Bear Peninsula with Paul Harris. Oh uh, yeah, it was good. He got, the, he got his grill so hot, it was unbelievable. And he said, you've got to sear the steak. Yeah. And it was, smoke honest it to God, the, the smoke, the kitchen is from one of the fire brigade didn't yeah. come. But I'm going to tell you, Paul, that was possibly, I've had two good steaks now, think yeah. about it, and that is it. This <laughs> is 69 Hopefully years. this is the third. Well, it'll be nice. And that steak was really good. And then I was in North Carolina once at a place called North Carolina Nags Head, it was. And being entertained by tourist board junket thing and on a fishing trip out of Oregon Inlet and it took me to a restaurant they gave me a a bone wine I think it's B-E-U-N-E the -E, red really nice and it went really well with the steak which was a filet mignon and that's mignon. the two best steaks I've had Paul's one in Ireland and one in North Carolina right let's turn that off that one turn it off for that. wow don't say that it doesn't look good guys oh, look <laughs> So this is our restaurant and boudoir, gentlemen. Let's get that down our necks, boys. It's looking good. Imagine if you're on one of your survival programs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a luxury. This is a luxury. This is why we come to places like Berry Fisheries. Look at it. The old main lake. It's like a piece of fishing history. Well, <laughs> Well, history, because we, at the moment it's just history, because we haven't caught anything yet. It's going to happen. Think positive. It's going to happen. Talk so what are, you do, what are you doing there, Mike? I'm going. I just, we were just talking. We've all got, we've got the same rig set up as, uh, as all, on all our rods. And I thought, let's just go for something slightly different, just in case it gives us the edge. So I've gone for a solid PVA bag with... The, uh, the, well, the same rig, the same sort of hair rig with a boilie on the end. I've gone for the smaller, I think that's a, probably an 18mm boilie or something like that. But I've gone for a smaller boilie and I've gone for the pellets this time in the solid PVA bag. And when I cast it, I'm not going to move it at all, just going to leave it. But I just figure maybe that will potentially draw maybe some bream in to start with. They shouldn't be able to neck that, they might do. But it just draws in the other fish to maybe bring in the carp to that area. I run the risk of obviously waking myself up at night with loads of bream. With three pound bream. Yeah, but at the <laughs> same time, it's nice if we've got five rods out overall between us, it's nice to have that tactic of just something slightly different, just in case it gets the edge of, we don't care who catches the fish, we just care about getting a fish. <laughs> We're at that stage. Yeah. So I want one of those little shovels you've got. It's just, yeah, it just comes with the PVA bags, I think. It's just quite handy. Just make sure the hair's clear. It's fiddly. They, do t they definitely take longer, the mesh, the solid bags, than the, the mesh bags. And you've got to twist and lick them, and you just semi-dissolve the PVA? Yeah, yeah, and you've just got to make it easier to get your hook, re hook uh, link tangled. But better for casting, I find, isn't yes, it? Yeah, yeah. It goes further, I'd say. You really boil these in, or just your loose stuff? This is now all in. All scratchings pellets? All pellets. All pellets. I just had a beep on a fresh just bait. Just on the one you cast out, yeah. Yeah, my but... se secret one, my secret flavour. I'm down to secret flavours now. You're on now. the secret stuff, are you? Yeah, yeah. steak and chips. Well, <laughs> it was strict on that one. No, really? Yeah. The 
want to just leave it. Yeah, if you fish that as your right hand rod, fish, and then have another go while it's daylight to try and yeah. zone in a bit more. Right, stay down, right? Ready? Right, yeah, I'm done. Bremer on mine already. Really? That's Bream, I reckon, because it's the... No, you don't know. Beeps on that rod. For those of you who might not realise, I'm actually using my barrow, which I converted for another fishery where they've got wood stagings, and I've converted the handle there so that it takes two buzzers, I can put my quiver tips, just regular rod rests, they're up high, possibly a little bit too high, but I'm just utilising my barrow, which is rock solid, and I can move it where I want to get the rods where I want, so that's what it is. First, got a fish hooked up. First fish of the night. First fish of the night. We think it's a bream. <laughs> We've got a few tiny little beeps. I don't think bream, it's a bream. Yeah, bream. No, it's a bream. That's a bream. And you can see the boilie right in the front just here. Quite a, can quite actually a big, use it again. big boilie for bait for the fish. But they are renowned for being <laughs> incredibly slimy. <laughs> At two in the morning, <laughs> we're carp fishing. We don't want to be we working up like those. We've just hit 10 p.m. And my hands are caked in it. We've just hit 10 p.m. and the, the geese are all coming into land in the lake. You can hear them. Whoa. Look at this right there. So yeah. 50, 60. It'll be a noisy night. Save the blank, Dad. Well done. Save the blank just. Finally, guys, we've got the most weird bite and a hookup. What's that we get the fish? It's 100%. It's a cut of It's a bream. Ooh, no. We were just saying how... Um, with the bites, they're just lots of small bites, aren't they, at the moment? Yeah, he's got the other line. Has he got there. that line? Yeah, Taking line out. Ooh. Is he? Not a small one. Good. Yeah, he's got the other line. Yeah. Shall I wind in as you bring that in? No, I'll leave it. Try and get the fish. This is a reasonable carp. Be nice, isn't it? He's got the other line. He's got this left hand yeah. one. Well, that's a good kick. I'm wondering if it's foul hook. Well, it suddenly kicked off, because didn't I've, it? I got a lot of line and I wound several turns of the reel before it came up solid. I'm going to call this foul hook. I may be wrong. How far out is he, do you think? Yeah, it's right in front of us. Oh, do you want me to get the net? It's just smack, it's something weird on the fight here. Definitely weird on the fight. There's a good bend in the rod. Yeah, good bend. Yeah. Yeah. Nice one, though. Yes, finally. Fish in the net. That's a decent fish, though. Yeah, that's a decent one. It's gonna go crazy. There we go, people. I see the fish is 13, 14 pounds maybe. Definitely a double. Very fat across the head there. And that's what we come here for. Wow. Nice. That one. was a weird bite. That I was, was weird. Head. I think he what we call slack lined, he pulled the lead towards us. He fought really well. But a good scrap, very good scrap. So here we go, people, we've got two cameras on the go. I've got a camera up there, a camera here, a light there. We've got four <laughs> lights and 16 people watching us. But a lovely looking carp. Weird, weird bite to it. 
just get it straight back. Result anyway, result. Well that was a slack line of that one. Yeah. That's what I thought of it up because probably a bream you'd have tightened up. Oh he's, oh he's come off. He came off, then he bumped. Like it's a bream bumped off. Because he was coming along the surface. Might have lost a boilie. No? No, he's just bumped off. What, straight back out or? Uh, I'll dry it out and put a bag on it. I think I've got to make another bag up. Is it bream or not? Is it ain't gone tight yet? It's gone tight, but it does. It's got my line there. Yeah, keep them low. I didn't actually see them go over there. Yeah, it looks a bit breamy. No, it's got some weight to it. Is it got some weight to it? I'd say a bream though, the way it's coming in, not quick, not kicking at all. He's got the other line there, man, has he? I don't know, it's a decent bream, isn't it, if it is? It's just the other line he's got, it's okay, I can see it. Common, is it? I think so, yeah. Going well, whatever it is. I see the. He's coming. He's coming. I think he's hooked from the outside. The mouth. I mean, he thought it's about five pounds. No, he's not five pounds. Oh, no. There we yeah, go, 12.30am, I've got my first fish, and it's quite a feisty one this one. This is a mirror carp, so it's a slightly different pattern to him, he's got scales on the top. But really purpose scrap, didn't he Dad, towards yeah, the Yeah, that's good, yeah, yeah. Wasn't sure again, but it was a bream, it's funny by yeah. sail. There he goes. Back to bed? Back to bed. Is that Yeah, it? I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this fish on a while now, it's chewing that down there. I didn't know any different, I'll say it's quite a good fish. Sort of tuna going round and round in circles. I can't see it being a six pounder. Pretty incredible scrapper, this one. Whatever it is, is in the net. Oh wow. Typical berry hill. Fish out one. On again, guys. Same size as the one Mike caught earlier, I'm guessing. Cover me in carp slime. There he is, boys. Nice looking fish. The memory card is actually uh, full on the camera. On the other camera, I've been using quite a few shots. And here's, a, here's another shot of uh, Michael. Look that, is coiled. It's like. A, He's like a coiled spring there. 
Right, I'm wide awake, so I might as well get another bait out and tie up another bag. Put this light out. A bit too much for me. <laughs> Guys, I'm on again. This feels like a pretty good fish. I've been out there trying to catch them on crust off the top and they're just drifting in this mist out the way. That's good fish here, I'd say. He's way back. A long way out. And hopefully he's up in the water. But look at this setting. All the mist coming up there. Could have done without those geese. Haven't had a wink of sleep all night. This is a long way out, this fish still. Digging and digging and digging. Here he goes. A long way round. Don't want him kiting in the side there, that's the thing. If he can help it. Yeah, there's the fish taking off the surface that I was trying to catch before this uh, rod went off down here. Because he's mopping up all the uh, bits of bread behind that duck there, just out of casting range. size this one's going to be. I'm hoping I'm going to go up and over that other line. I somehow fear the worst. Whoa. He wanted to go then. Fish is still taking crust off the surface. My gilly is in there, inside that green sleeping bag, asleep. <laughs> this feels a pretty fair fish, people. I think I might be over the top. I think I might be over it. He's, he's just nearly went in then. Yes, it's a good fish. Another double, I, I would feel. Good fish. In a magnificent setting. Here he comes. He looks like a big mirror. Oh, don't go on the other line. Oh, yes, this is all right. This is a nice fish. Up a double, I'd say, people. I got in. He's in. Big mirror. Let's get them out and check this puppy out. Hooks out. There's the old boily. Wow, boys. No scales. I'm going to pay a big price on this one. I'll try and just get that just there so we'll try and get you a lift there we go I say 16 17 something like that good big chunk biggest biggest fish so far and he still hasn't woken up great let's get it back well <clears throat> You'll get it by the current attire that dawn is cold, even in the summer, and I'm not going to get cold. So I'm really pleased with that last fish. Our man's still in here. I've got here, I'm not sure I've got that hot enough. I've got the brew going. Get up a cup of tea. There was actually a mouse down here that was chewing my, uh, my baited bags up. Oh, the other thing is, I wonder if I've got anything on the trail cab, or that kettle's brewing. I'll wake him up. 
What a good job I put all the plates from last night up here. Otherwise we'd have been inundated by creatures. Thank God the geese have gone. I have not had a single wink of sleep. It's 4.50 a.m. in the morning. But it is superb. It's gonna be a hot day, I'd say, today. You wouldn't believe it at the moment, but still. It's worth staying up all night and not sleeping for a view like this. Makes me want to go tench fishing, that's the trouble. Four o'clock in the morning. Float just sitting there, sliding away. Seems to be those days are long gone. 